be with you all. And, uh, you know, the thing that I, I see that a lot of options traders are asking us about a big trends, you know, I founded the company back in 1999. David uh, has actually worked with me for a number of years. So it's what we've stayed in a lot of touch. So I appreciate that. I'm glad to see you all doing so great out there. Um, you know, bottom line is that it's, everybody's asking about winning percentage. How do I get more winning trades? How do I win more often? And there's a lot of st stuff out there. You see headlines of, I never lose on a trade and 99 point whatever percent win rate. And I, I just don't, I don't buy that. I think that in my 30 years of options trading, you know, if you can find something that's winning, uh, even six out of 10, you should be real happy. Seven out of 10, you should be really, really pleased. And eight out of 10 or more, you should be ecstatic. And you still have to learn how to manage your risk the other 20% of the times. And what I'm going to talk about today, which is how do we set up what we call credit spread trades uh, to, to take income in, but uh, at the same time, know that there's times where the markets can go haywire. Let's face it, we've all seen it in 2020 with uh, the volatility, not just on the way down in March, but of course, the amazing comeback over the past couple of months. So, so I want to walk you through that today. And just a reminder that everything that I share with you today is for your information and education only. Uh, what we're talking about here is, is not be considered a specific recommendation to buy or sell any particular investment. So I'm going to give you a lot of case studies, but I'm not going to look at a live chart because I don't want somebody to think, okay, he just talked about that stock and is now telling me to get bullish or bearish on it. You, you, what you learned today, you can apply to pretty much any stock or any market you want. But the bottom line note is that you are 100% responsible for your own investment decisions. So always take that accountability. At Big Trends, we've always been about empowering traders uh, to have better information to make better decisions in the heat of battle while knowing how to manage risk. So we're not responsible for any trades you choose to make, of course, and not all products and services are appropriate for all types of traders and investors. We don't provide personalized financial tax or legal advice to any trader. What we do instead is we take our research that we get on these trades I'm gonna show you. We put them out through real-time email and text alert to your smartphone when you become a subscriber. And I've got a really super way that you can get started to try it out. Uh, for the next 30 days at the end of the presentation here. But hang with me because I want you to understand what we're doing. So like I said, what we're talking about is what everybody asked for, which is consistency when 80% or more of the time is, is, is what we're after and do it week after week. Now, knowing that there's going to be times where you have a little give back and times where you have a little bit more in your pocket than you expected. So it kind of is about playing the averages over time. And what everybody's telling me is they need more income. How about you? Yeah, I think we all, uh, no matter how well you're doing, we all want more. And the, the, the concept, though, is how do we get more income while managing our risk? So I'm, I think the reason that I've been able to stay in, in business, and much less stay in the options game for 30 years, is that I've always thought about risk first. So you're going to hear me talking a lot about risk throughout. Everybody else is out there talking about you're going to make jillions of money overnight. I would rather focus you on how much, how, how can you control your risk and, and know that even, even when you're not right, you can basically keep yourself in the game for the long haul and get back to uh, more great trades to come. The, what the basic strategy I want to talk about today is how do we define an overbought market where there's a ceiling overhead or an oversold market where we should see a floor, where we should see support. So it's about having something that's going to adapt to the markets, adapt to, of course, the volatility that we've seen and still be able to get through it fine. And then it's about how do you then take the option strategy? Once we've got the stock selection piece and the uh, whatever security you like to trade down, then it's about how do you create the option strategy to create that cash flow? So this is an income generation strategy during volatile or during choppy sideways times. Now, Past performance is not a guarantee of future results, but you can see here, just if you look at, since the, about the pandemic really got heated up there, about March 9th to June 9th, just taking a, a sample 90-day uh, look back, we, we generated an 85.71% win rate on this strategy. So in, the, in that 90-day window, we averaged about a 21.4% gain per trade. This is before commissions on an options trade, but the reality is commissions have come down to next to nothing. That in my 30 years of options trading, what happened last fall with the broker all out price war, uh, you know, uh, Schwab, uh, you know, coming in and, and, uh, and creating that price cut, then buying out TD Ameritrade. I mean, th these, and then coming down to basically options, you only pay 
uh, a, like a contract fee rather than any commission pretty much at most of the big shops now. If you're paying too much for options commissions, you need to get up, up to speed on that first and foremost. That's one of the best things that's happened in my 30 years of options trading. I can remember when I started in 1990, fresh out of graduating from Duke University, thought I knew it all, made the classic early mistakes. Uh, of buying out of the money options and thinking I was right and the market would catch up and it didn't uh, and paid that early price and, and, and said, I better fix that real fast. I was paying something like 50 bucks per trade on a, on a less than a thousand dollars investment, which is absurd now, right? You think about that and you're like, that's crazy uh, 30 years ago, how much options commissions were. And now they're next to nothing if uh, practically nothing. So bottom line is great time to be trading options and to be trading them actively. So, never been a better time in my view. Now, again, like I said, past performance doesn't guarantee success. So we've got to talk about uh, uh, how to manage that risk as we go through the presentation. So what we're talking about here is credit spreads. And a credit spread sounds technical, but all it is is you're collecting a credit into your account when you do this option spread strategy, which is selling one option, then buy another to protect yourself. So you hear a lot of people talk about doing a naked put or a, you know selling a put below the market as a way to acquire stock cheaper. I don't do anything naked in options. I don't do anything uh, that's uncovered. I always hedge my position so that basically I can't get that kind of worst case scenario that could potentially take me out. You hear a lot of people in, in the bull market of the past decade, even I, the last year to 18 months, I was hearing all kinds of people saying, I'm making a fortune selling naked puts. And I say, well, that's going to end badly. We know that uh, in the 80s, of course, the crash of 87 wiped a lot of people out who were selling naked puts. So we don't recommend that. We recommend covering that by buying another put further down below to protect your worst case risk. So here's an example. This is an example with the stock say of $47. And the strategy I'm talking about today is focus, we call it credit spread trader as an alert service here at bigtrends.com. But bottom line is that we do it with just blue chip stocks. You could do this with indexes, um, but what we're talking about here is just picking out blue chip names. I don't do it on really speculative uh, biotechs or things that are not solid companies. Uh, I, I basically do it on things that I know these, these companies should be around for many lifetimes. Uh, so bottom line is you got a stock at 47 bucks. The usual options thinking is what? You think the stock's going up, you go, I'm gonna buy a call. Well, which call do I buy? Well, now we're saying flip the script. Instead of buying the call, first sell one put, in this case a 45 put. But you can see if the stock's at 47, that's two points below the market, which means that you can even be wrong by a couple of points or about 4% on the stock and still get your maximum profit at expiration. Um, so this is a strategy that wins not only when you're right about direction, but if it stays flat or if it moves a little bit against you, you can still hit, get your maximum profit. But at the same time I buy that one put, I'm going to or sell that one put, I'm going to buy another put to protect myself. This, this example is a little bit older example where we're doing five point spreads. Now we're doing a lot of one point spreads. So we're really even further tightening our risk. But look at what's our on a typical contract where you might collect, say, two points or $200 per spread contract to sell a 45 put and simultaneously buy the 40 put that protects you. Notice, same expiration date, same number of contracts. Don't get cute. Keep it simple. Uh, the KISS principle often comes into play in my three decades of options trading to say the, the simpler I keep it, usually the better I do. If I get too complex, try to get too fancy, try to take one leg off, put one leg off another time, you'll notice you end up probably hurting yourself more than helping yourself over a, a large sample of trades. It's usually better to get in in a package uh, on these spread trades or get out as a package deal when it's time to get out. Don't get too cute and think you can flip a loser into a winner and all that nonsense. Just sometimes you got to take your lumps and move on. Uh, that's, that's just called, you know, saving your skin to be around for the longer haul. So we're going to get into that too. With the credit spread, the goal now has changed. We're not trying to make our maximum dollars, our big dramatic move in our favor is not our goal anymore. Instead, our goal has become, let's have the, the underlying not move dramatically against you. So if it can move a little bit against you, flat or in your favor in any way, that's now a, a wide range of scenarios, which is what makes it such a higher probability strategy. What's your break even at expiration here? If you if stocks at 47 and you're wrong uh, at expiration at $43, you collected two bucks. So take the 45 strike price you sold, two bucks below that uh, as the credit you got, that's gonna be your break even at expiration. Now, if it hits 43 before expiration, that's our, min, our, our, our last 
point of saying you've got to get out by at least hitting below any tick below forty three dollars because you're going to be at a at, at a below your break even at expiration. And you're going to be a little bit worse off if it happens. You know, put on a trade and immediately you're wrong by in this case what eight and a half percent of the stock. Yeah, you're going to not get much of the time erosion, which is your goal here, which is to collect. Let time work for you. Uh, cue the Rolling Stones song. Put time on your side, uh, and and the idea being that now when we sell this one put, buy the cheaper put. That's my insurance policy. When I buy this forty put, what have I done? You can see that it doesn't get any worse here than that maximum risk of three hundred dollars lost in this example. You say, why would you ever do a strategy where you can only make two hundred but you could lose three hundred? Why would you flip it? not in your favor because you're going to win so much more often. If you can win four out of five times, 200, 200, 200, 200, you get 800 bucks in your pocket four times, and then you lose your maximum 300 loss. The next one, uh, 800 went down to 500 net over five trades. That's an average positive expectancy of a hundred dollars a trade and then scale up your contracts accordingly. If you can make, and obviously if we see it breaking even before it hits that maximum risk under 43, we believe we can keep our risk to significantly less than that maximum a few hundred dollar loss. So bottom line is that it's important that we manage that. We're going to talk about managing that risk. And then it's about how do we keep that strike price working for us. Now we're going to talk about what are we doing here is we're looking at a daily chart. Um, this is Costco, COST is a symbol, of course, daily chart. So this is not something that you have to watch all day, every day. It's something where we put these trades out in our credit spread trader service in the last 60 to 90 minutes of a given trading day. So our, all of our subscribers know, well, gee, you, you know, you don't need to worry about missing a trade. You know that if it's going to come out, it's going to come out uh, between usually about, about three o'clock uh, Wall Street time, usually about an hour to go before the close. So it could be 30 to 90 minutes before the close. We want to give our subscribers plenty of time to get in. So we send a real time alert to say, okay, this is a trade we want to get into at Costco at the time. This is back, you can see, as the pandemic was going to full force here uh, mid March. And you said, are you crazy doing a put credit spread in mid March when the market's plunging? Well, Costco fit our parameters here. What's our, what are the parameters? We've got a longer term moving average here. We don't give away all the, all the uh, signals for free, but when you get that one month trial, you'll get all the settings that you can apply for on your own uh, charts as well. But bottom line is we, we use a longer term moving average to say, okay, in this case, if we're gonna be a, a put credit spread neutral to bullish, it must be above that longer term moving average when we get in. You can see that in this trade, it's going to actually briefly go below it, but the key is, does it violate our ultimate parameters or not? And notice there's another thing on this chart, which is this oscillator here, which is again, something you get access to when you become a subscriber, but it's an overbought, oversold oscillator. Notice on the far bottom right here, it's below the 10 percentile on this oscillator. This is a trading oscillator that we've been using now for a number of years. Um, that's basically something that says, okay, now it's oversold enough that you know that this thing is, it, and actually the day before it was even oversold enough uh, right near the close and then flipped a little bit up. So but this is just a close to close day. It was down there when we put this trade out uh, at about 3 p.m. that day on the on the oval circle here. So we're getting into this trade when the stock's trading around 300 bucks. Now, notice, this is what I love about this credit spread trader strategy um, is that we were wrong at first. And a lot of times when you're wrong, especially if you bought call options, you could be getting crushed really, really bad that next day when it pops down, you can see it tests the old lows down here right around 280. And we had said to our subscribers, if this thing's going to have a, a daily close under 280, we're going to blow it out. We got close to knocking it out. It, it finished that day here about 281, uh, that, that next full day in the trade. And we're definitely, we're down on that trade at that point. Now notice, what do we collect here? We collected a hundred dollars per contract on a five point spread. So that means we're risking $400. So you say, geez, the max we can make is, is 25% on that $400 of money. If you do a 10 lot, that'd be collecting $1,000 and, and risking a net of 4,000. So, so the idea is that you can scale this to any size. We tend to show all of our, all of our track record history based on typically a starter account of about $1,000 risk per trade. So if that's the case, we get a couple contracts here, have about 200 bucks collected, have about 800 bucks of risk. So gee, that seems like it's upside down, but you can see the idea is that unless it breaks this level, which if it had broken this level here under 280, we were probably looking at for $100 we collected, we'd probably be buying the same back end for about a $250, uh, you know, somewhere in that neighborhood, about $150 to $200 loss 
on that trade would have been our likely risk. And you see instead here, we end up uh, taking the full profit as it bounces back up. And we, in the six trading days, it hits our, hits our um, point where we say, let's just get out even before 25% gain, take the 20% gain. This is not a home run strategy, as you can see. This is more about playing the probability of saying when this thing gets oversold enough, even if you're wrong for a day or two or even sometimes three, we can stay with this trade because we've got the wiggle room. It tested us, but we didn't get knocked out. Um, and by the way, before I go on, you can see this next one, it looks like, well, it got oversold. Why don't you take this next trade? Notice at this point, it's it's below that longer term moving average in black. So we would not want to take that trade setup, even though it would have worked out. It's not something that it would be worth the risk to us of losing that long-term support for a bullish trade. Obviously, for a bearish one, it's going to be the other way. We want to see it below that long-term trend line. Now, here's one that was a lot speedier in how it worked out. Walmart, uh, you can see here back there at the end of April, we're getting an oversold signal now for a couple days. Part of what we look for in the strategy, you'll note, is we don't want to buy a falling knife. This thing's going down vertically here, and we're saying stay away while Walmart's going down day after day. In the pandemic, obviously, that's part of the goal is avoiding those kind of plunge scenarios. But when it does a reversal and you see it start to close up, the green candle, of course, means we're closing up here around 124. We're able to then say, okay, we feel that the momentum is now turned. We're coming out of an oversold zone and momentum's turning back up. So we're selling the 120 put, we're buying the 119 put to protect ourselves. For that one point of max risk, you actually only have a net of 80 cents of risk. So 80 bucks of risk on a $20 collected for one contract. Remember, multiply these all times 100 for one contract controlling 100 shares of stock. So in this case, you're saying, okay, look, we're collecting, uh, say you do a 10 lot, you're collecting 200 bucks, you're risking 800 bucks, something like that. Um, on our model portfolio, we might actually do like, you know, 12 lot, co collect 240, risk 960. But the, the numbers are still the same, max profit of 25%. And here's a great example where it's starting to work in our favor and then boom, you go down. If you bought calls, you were in the hole. Instead, we're saying, you know what? It's starting to reverse on us. We're starting to uh, go back down and we're taking our 20% profit. We're not going to try to hold that for that last five percentage points of profit when, when there's just too much diceness and it's not working like we thought. So, so basically we're saying, okay, we're wrong on the stock by about a point to maybe a point and a half, and we're still making 20% on that credit spread in four trading days. I don't know about you, but I love being wrong and still making money in options. That's one of the great things about options trading is that if you structure your trade right, you don't have to be right about direction anymore to still make money. You have to just avoid being badly wrong about direction. Notice, here's a case that you, you could really get your get yourself in trouble if you don't follow our, our screening filters here. You say, is that a time to bet on the downside when the stock's here about 126? No, it's not. Don't try to get bearish there. Notice, you would have gotten your head handed to you two days later when it went up to 132. You know, so the idea, even though, yes, it did come back down, the idea is don't don't get in, in, in a long-term moving average. The long-term moving average is positive. Only consider buy the dip, put credit spreads. Don't do call credit spreads in the uptrend. I know a lot of traders who have blown themselves up amid bull runs that lasted a lot longer than they thought it would. Another example, here's Facebook. So Facebook back here in May, um, you can see last month, uh, you know, we had a situation here where Facebook had, had good earnings, stock had a gap up settled then started trailing up then here comes the dip so here's where we're getting the oversold signal here and it's coming off of that with that reversal in here where the stock's back up to about uh 207 208 and because of the volatility thanks to the pandemic volatility levels have been quite high as you know um that we're able to go well out of the money we're able to sell a 195 put and, and by the way, how, how far out are we selling in time? We're going out not far at all. We're going out here to the May week four expiration. So that's the fourth fr Friday in May, which we're already basically halfway through the month of May. So we've got in this case, like less than, uh, right about a week that we have until the expiration. But instead, we're able to take advantage of this in just a two days, two to three days, the stock's popped up dramatically we've seen it gone from about 208 up to about 218 we're saying you know what we can make uh in this case uh, on 50 bucks on a on a two and a half point spread again it's a net risk of two dollars so 50 a, a half buck over two bucks is uh, again a 25 percent return and we're saying we'll take the 21 percent in two days and, and say we got a pareto's principle 80 percent or more of the total profit in the position uh, for just a couple of days work. We'll take it. As it turns out, we could have made the full profit a few days later. But as you know, 
a bird in the hand in this market is worth more than two in the bush because of the way that things can turn on you off of the next morning's gap type of a situation. So we've just been even more proactive to book those profits. I love this chart. This is Starbucks. You know, Starbucks, this is pre-pandemic. This is late last year. But, uh, but the idea being that here's an example where you can see what happened from our first entry point to basically our last exit on this trade is the stock's actually down from where we first got that initial first buying point. We had three winning trades out of three possible uh, entries. We had three winners and, and the stock was actually going the wrong direction during that entire period. You say, how is that possible? Well, again, look, it got oversold. It's starting to turn up now. Uh, and we, as we get that upturn, we're getting in here. If we didn't get in that afternoon, we might've gotten in here this next afternoon here as it retested that same level. Stock's about 66 bucks and edges on up to about 67 and a half. That first one's good for 19 and three quarter percent gain. Next one you see, we get off to a very nice start off of this next oversold point the day before. Look at that nice reversal where, you know what, if you, if you are to hair trigger on your trades, you say, well, it's already oversold. Heedly waits till it reverses. I don't want to wait and give up too much potential. What'll happen is you'll get in too early and then you'll be risking getting stopped out before the trade starts to show some price action firming up. And, and then that's what the problem is for a lot of novice traders. They think they can front run and get in ahead of an indicator or a signal and then it, it end up getting stopped out too early. And then in this case, we've missed that flush that happened off of that next morning's pop down. We're now back in from this next run to the upside. And even as it pops down the next morning, you can see the stock's down and we're still making 20% in four trading days. And the last one here, see the stock's gotten pounded. You say, are you starting to get worried about this trend? Not really for us, because we're still above that red longer term trend line. We just changed the color on it. But bottom line is you can see here, we're seeing that we were seeing enough of a holding a support right here that we felt pretty good that even though, you know, the market is, is was again, a little dicey there, but by the line, we felt good about it. Stock's about 61 and a half. I think we're selling a 60 strike, which is down here. We still had some good support and then it starts to reverse and we're cashing it in after that third trading day, 18 and a half percent will take the money and run. So that is pretty amazing that the stock can be down and we've got three for three winners in a, in a stock moving against us mode. So as you can see, what is this strategy benefiting from? It's benefiting from the timing of the short-term trend action saying it's too oversold here and then the longer term trend being in your favor. So buying the dips in an uptrend truly is what we're doing here. Selling the rips as we call it, selling the bounces in a downtrend is what we'll look at here in a couple of minutes with the other side of a, of a credit spread on a call credit spread trade. Here's Amazon. We usually would not mess with Amazon, but as you know, it's about as blue chip as you get these days when it comes to a true winner in the post pandemic world. Um, you know, they're already killing it before then, and now they've just become even more of a source of online orders delivered to your front door. Uh, you don't have to go to the store. Why put yourself at risk? Uh, Amazon, clear winner. Um, bottom line is that, you know, uh, in this case, we're selling 1837 and a half puts. Stock's trading about 1865-ish. Uh, so it's about, you know, 27 points out of the money. So that's a thing in percentage terms, that's about one and a half percent of the stock. That's not a lot, but it's enough given that we're not going to be in this trade longer, as you can see, than about maybe a, a week and a half maximum that we sold out to on the expiration date. But three days later, we said, we'll take the 35% gain here, two and a half point spread. We actually got a pretty juicy 80 bucks per contract, meaning we were only risking 170 bucks. That was almost a 50%, about a 47% uh, win per, uh, or, or gain that we could have made on that trade. Why do we take them out early? Because just what you see here, look what happens a couple of days later, the stock gets actually absolutely creamed and comes down. Uh, and then now you're starting to get nervous when it's down to 1850 and we cashed in at 1890. So you've got to be proactive if you want to uh, sleep better at night, not worry about next the next gap. When usually our, our rule of thumb for us is if we can get 80% of our maximum profit in a position, we'll be inclined to take it unless we're just so far out of the money and the stock shouldn't get back to that level where sometimes then you can just let them expire worthless and pocket the full amount in, in your account. Here's Goldman Sachs. So you see a lot of these high dollar ones, we can't do one point spread. So we're doing like a two and a half point spread on GS, January week five, selling 237 and a half puts, buying 235 puts. Again, look where we got in here. It's going oversold. And you say, you know what? Oversold can always get more oversold. The key is 
have breathing room on these trades. Breathing room in the form of don't sell. When the stock's, even if the stock was 240, don't sell the 240 put. Don't sell the after money puts. Go out of the money, preferably to a prior support level. You can see like this one looked like to us. It had a prior support level here, just down around, not just 240, but also down here in this 237 zone. Um, and this is from the prior month. And so you're saying, okay, that's exactly what happened. It ended up testing uh, just under 237 and a half here. It got to 235 maybe intraday, but look where it closed back about 239. So you're finishing back out of the money. You want to keep your credit spreads out of the money and you don't want them going in the money against you. So that's the goal here. We collected 58 bucks a contract, took the 26 and a half percent gain uh, four days later. So, you know, it avoids, it avoids the shakeout that we'd experience when you're having to put a stop, say, on an option that you purchase and say, now we basically say, okay, now let's watch it day to day. And if we do need to get out, of course, we'll alert subscribers to say, yes, it's hit our kind of threshold where we have to say we can't afford to hang around on this one anymore. Now, this is an important one when it comes to flipping around and saying what kind of stocks you're going to use when you're betting on a, on a stock going down or not going up. You know, the, the gain... The, the big gain scenario now is what you don't want to have on the upside if you sell a, a, a call and then buy a further out call. In this example, $33.5 stock price, sell a 35 call, buy the 45, 40 call uh, to protect yourself to, uh, five points above the strike you sold. Like I said, now we're doing a lot more one and two and a half point spreads. But bottom line is that don't do this strategy on uh, several things. Don't do it on takeover rumor stocks. Because even though a lot of those rumors are BS, there's still the occasional one that'll hit. And if this stock goes from 33 and a half and opens at 40 plus, you know, which again, you know, your break even here is at 37, 10% higher. And at 40, you're, you're almost 20% higher. But on a takeover, you know, a stock could go up 20, 30, 40, 50%. Um, you don't want to be in that kind of situation. Same thing with earnings. I do not recommend doing any kind of credit spreads right in front of earnings. You may get tempted because the premiums might look juicier. But remember, you're selling one juicy premium, then you have to buy another premium to protect yourself. So you're really not taking advantage of the quote unquote high volatility. This is more of a time erosion trade that you're putting time on your side in this last week or two before the expiration dates on the weekly options. So don't do it on those kind of scenarios, uh, big, big takeover, big earnings play. Get that out of the way and take that, a lot of that gap risk out of, out of um, allowing you to sleep better at night and not worry about so much about if a trade is going to have a big gap against you. But you can see in case it did have a big gap against you, your max risk is at 40 or higher. Same kind of profiles we showed you before, $200 gain, $300 loss. But a lot of them these days where we're taking in, you know, maybe a hundred bucks risking 400, uh, taking in, you know, uh, say 200 bucks risking 800, that happens and, it, and it's still plenty acceptable to us. In fact, it's a lot more acceptable because you're able to go further out of the money and give yourself more breathing room. We mentioned Goldman as a put credit spread. Here's Goldman the other direction. We're now below a long-term average. Notice that we flipped, flipped everything around. Now you've been overbought and seeing an intraday reversal here. So you're losing momentum, even though it gapped up, it's closing below where it opened. So that's, that's a trigger for us. And then we're wrong initially, okay? I, I can't highlight this enough. This stock's about 186. We sold a 195 call. Next day, we're up to about 192 and a half. So you're getting up near your strike price you sold, but not quite there. And then boom, the oversold, overbought period, I should say, collapses back towards oversold. Um, you can see at that point, usually if we're getting near this oversold threshold, that's another place where we might consider taking the profit, right? You can see we got really close to it up here as another one up here, but it wasn't quite reversing and we weren't quite overbought enough. So we, we ended up missing that trade because it didn't quite get to our parameters. That happens. I always tell my students and fellow credit spread traders that uh, – if, if a train leaves the station without you on board, you're better off to not to try to chase that train as it's moving away from you. You might end up on the tracks, right? Don't do that. Wait for the next one. Uh, you know, wait for the right setup where you can get on safely with much less risk of getting trampled. So the idea here is that, you know, it's all about saying, okay, the setup was right. We had the patience and we had the wiggle room. Wiggle room, I cannot emphasize enough, giving it the proper wiggle room really, really helps. Home Depot, okay, we're betting on Home Depot flattening out here. You know, in the post-pandemic, we've had the bounce back. Stores are reopening. They stayed open, you know, as, as a quote-unquote essential business. So you think that was good for them. But you can see when the stock gets this overbought here, 
we're starting to see this loss of momentum off of the open pretty wide ranging candle you could say that day but losing that momentum and you can see in this case it actually goes against us by the second day uh, it goes up to about 207 uh, we sold 207 and a half call so we're getting close to the strike price we sold we bought 210 to protect ourselves two and a half points max risk but really net max risk of about a buck uh, 84 and you can see, so we collected 66 on a buck 84. That's more than a 33% profit potential. We took the 22% gain and we're like, hey, the stock's barely in our favor after the fourth day. We're kind of glad we did because you can see that two days later, it's up to that 210 kind of, 210 or higher is your max risk. You know, so, so even though it's settled back down that case, you don't want to play that guessing game. If it's not doing what you want it to do, time to just take, take a two thirds of your profit at, at its maximum and move on. This is the chart that we're taking advantage of. More than a volatility chart, more than a directional chart, we're taking advantage of the time decay or theta chart here. A lot of people would say, well, uh, if we look at, uh, say, an at or out of money option, we're talking about just the time option value here. You'll notice that if you're looking at the expiration day, which is day zero on the far bottom right there, a lot of people say, well, why not sell more time and get more total dollars? We well, can see, in this case, this, this chart shows you that the last 30 days is where you get the bulk of the decay. It looks like about two thirds of the total decay. But if you go down to about 10 days here, you can see that you're actually still getting a ton of decay on a, on a per day or per 10 day basis. You can see that you're taking in maybe about a, between a quarter to 30% of the total time erosion in the last 10 out of those 120 days. So for less than 10% of the time, uh, going by, you're getting more than 30% of the total bang for your buck. That's where you're going to get a rapid benefit and decay working for you when you sell these out of the money credit spreads. So that's the most rapid decay. And it's also something where we, we can get enough premium. I don't want to do this with a day or two to go before expiration. It's just too risky. There's too, there's too much what we call gamma risk in those kinds of situations. I'd rather focus on getting that time working nicely for us those last couple of weeks or less into the expiration. And as you see, in a lot of these examples, we'll close them early before the expiration date because we've gotten most of our profit in, in our subscribers' pockets. So here's a case with Tesla. Again, this was before this incredible run that it's had. The stock was really acting badly. And you can see hit over overbought here. We waited because it was too strong on that day. Next day, sure, it still uh, shows a green candle, but it's right back in the same resistance. So we felt like this is showing us a lot of resistance in here around 255. We're selling 265 calls. They're like, wow, we're pretty juicy here. We said we'll take 45 bucks a contract um, to risking like 205. So we've already, you can see, hit the expiration there just four days later. So we knew we weren't going to be in this trade very long because the expiration is coming up. So in that kind of a case, we're like, okay, as long as we can just manage this closely. If it starts moving past that 265 level plus the premium collected on a name like Tesla, we're not going to mess around on that trade. You can see maybe intraday that next morning it might have gotten to about 258, but it didn't get to that 265 level or even close and started to reverse back down. So, and we got more case studies to talk about, but this this whole foundation is built on this weekly options uh, piece. There's on these big names, the big blue chips. You've got weekly options, typically going out um, at least over the next four weekly cycles. Um, if you're looking at some of the most active ones, they'll go out even more. But we're usually looking at the next couple of them. We don't use weekly options with only two or three days to go, like I said. We're usually at that point looking out to the following Friday. So like today, I wouldn't be messing with tomorrow's expiration. I'd be looking out to next Friday's expiration. So that would give us, you know, in this case now, about six trading days left. Uh, not counting, obviously, if you get a holiday or something. The beauty of doing these two towards the end of a week for the following week is that you get that weekend decay already starting to work for you. The last week of an, a last weekend of an options, a weekly options life. You know, if it's got seven days to go from, say, tomorrow to the following Friday, and you're going, hey, I can get two of those seven days in my pocket with a Saturday, Sunday where we don't trade at a holiday and on a typical Monday or something even better, you got July 4th obviously being celebrated soon uh, a day ahead on a Friday. So you might get a trade on a Thursday right before you get into a long weekend for the next Friday's expiration, something like that. So you're getting a lot of time decay working for you where you know the market's not even trading, but that's how options are still priced. It's based on calendar days, believe it or not. That's another little tip for you uh, as, a, as a spread trader to put credit spreads to work for you late into a week before a weekend uh, with the next Friday's expiration. Uh, we use these adaptive, um, uh, now, 
uh, overbought, oversold uh, readings to tell us, okay, how do we adjust that market volatility? And then factor in that moving average against us. For the stocks that we use, like I said, it's most of your blue chips. Blue chips that have a healthy enough premium that makes it worthwhile. You'd be amazed at some of the names that we would love to trade, but we feel like you don't get enough bang for your buck relative to um, how much that thing can move. And a great example of that would be the ETF TLT, which is the bond ETF. You've seen the bond market go crazy up, down, and, and all over. Um, you'd think that the premiums would be really jacked up, but for credit spread trades, TLT doesn't give you a lot of breathing room. You've got to go too close to the current price of the underlying uh, bond ETF, which is a very active and popular one. We won't do it for a credit spread because we don't feel we get enough cushion. So like I said, you want to be careful about doing this right in front of earnings. So we wouldn't do it right in front of earnings. Uh, that would be tempting, but it'd be a mistake because then, you know, the thing that can really knock you with any kind of a strategy, but especially a credit spread strategy is a big gap move against you. How could that happen? Takeover or earnings? You know, so those are two things we really want to get out of the equation and not have to worry about so much. The names that we use, um, we give our stock focus list to all of our credit spread trader subscribers are your typical big blue chips um, where, you know, a lot of the Dow stocks, a lot of the um, big name uh, NASDAQ stocks where we know we can get in and out easily. You see a, a good sampling of them here. Activision, the video game stocks have been a lot hotter this year. You can see last year, not so hot. Uh, they were, uh, it was very over bought below a long-term trend line starting to show signs of, of losing momentum intraday here. And then so okay, we're, we're basically seeing the stock about 47 and we're able to sell a 48 call by a 49 call. That doesn't seem like a lot of wiggle room, a couple percent above, but you don't have a lot of time on this. We were able to say even as it essentially went slightly down after that nice quick bounce, the indicator did its job, right? It predicted a deadening kind of flattening to lower period for the stock and we're able to get 28% eight days later, eight trading days later. So, and it turns out right before it pops again. So, you know, it's the kind of stuff that we're going to look for. Will we take this one here where it's popping up here? No, because it's too strong. You'd have to wait for at least one more day. If it rallies on through that old high resistance, we're not going to love to see that either. So it's just one of those things where, you know, you really want to be very clear about these rules here. Here's Union Pacific. Again, a, rail, a railroad stock, you'd think that's not necessarily the sexiest name. It's not, it's not a big fang name in the tech sector or whatever. But the idea being we're getting very oversold here. We're getting another day where it looks like it's now really reversing. And you see we're wrong initially on this one. Stock's about 167 and a half, and we're selling a 165 put, buying 162 and a half. Remember what I said before, if it goes down uh, too much below that uh, 165 level, um, and in this case, uh, 164 was touched briefly intraday before it quickly reversed. But if it stays down there under that 164 and a half level, especially at the close, you can see here it closed about 166, then we're gonna get out. But, but the idea is that, you know what, instead it flips as it pops on up from being initially wrong a little bit, um, by about three or four points at its worst to then up about um, several points. We're able to get that 25.6% in five trading days. So that's again why we booked that bird in the hand uh, and say, okay, thank you very much. We'll take it. Um, that's headed into an expiration on that Friday the 21st before then it, it flips the other way. Baidu, the, what they call the Chinese Google. You know, this is one that again, you can see a lot of breathing room on these big China names where you're saying, okay, hey, this is something where Stock's very overbought, and now we're getting a nice little reversal bar here as it starts to come back down. And so, okay, it's just about 118. We're able to sell 122 calls, um, buy 122 to protect ourselves. Get 20 bucks a contract. We've got, you know, four points plus of wiggle room, about 5% on the stock of wiggle room. And you can see the stock just edges down. Oh, by the way, this would be a, a normal first spot where we might consider buying it back as it then flips to oversold. But we're going at that point, look, it's below 115. We've got all this wiggle room with only a, a few more days to go to the expiration. And we're instead riding it out to the expiration to book that full 25% gain. Remember the 20 bucks over 80 bucks is the 25% and we took the full thing out. One of the great things about credit spreads is when you let them go to expiration and just let them go away over that weekend after they expire, a, you don't pay a commission. Obviously, that's less of an issue now. But B, they just get wiped out of your account. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to do anything the next Monday after an expiration when they both both legs have expired out of the money. 
they just literally wipe them out of the account and you pocket that premium. It's like being an insurance company. Think about how nice it is if you're an insurance company and you've got a bunch of premium dollars that have been paid and you don't have to pay out the level of claims, the level of, uh, you don't have the level of problems that were expected. Where do all those dollars go? It goes right into your pocket, right? So the idea is that you become more like the insurance company, more like the casino rather than the, the speculator on the other side. It's more about putting the odds in your favor. Here's CVS, again, CVS Pharmacy, very blue chip, liquid name. You know, see it was, it was dropping in here this first day, but then this next day it was starting to stabilize in here. These days we probably wait a little bit more, this is an older one here, but we probably wait a little bit more for this hook here uh, that's happening. But you know, even with this one here, uh, it's 75 and a half and we sold 74, bought 73, it's like 21 bucks a contract you see. You have to endure it down right near the strike price is why we wait for that hook these days. But then as it popped back up the next couple of days, get a 20% gain four days later. So you say, okay, this is about creating that consistent, stable income stream. You know, it's, it, you know, I've had a lot of people that say, okay, I'm, if I'm stopping my day job, how do I replace those checks? And this is about like writing a check to yourself. As long as you know how to manage the risk when it's not working, we're going to look at an example of that here in a minute of what you need to do. So basically you say, okay, you know, about three to seven trading days, about a week to a week and a half. But like you see, a lot of times we may take it out early and about a trade a week is what we tell our, our credit spread trader subscribers. Anytime between about 2.30 and 3.30 PM Wall Street time, Eastern time, but it's Wall Street time, New York City time, they're uh, trading on the exchange. You say, okay, we want to thus have at least a half hour, if not an hour or more to get into the trade for our subscribers. And by the way, it's another service among a lot of our services at Big Trends can be auto traded um, uh, and that's something when you become a subscriber, you can ask about, it's a, no additional charge. It's just, you can do it across several options. Focus brokers will get you in and out automatically when we fire the trade, once you're a confirmed paid subscriber. Um, so you see 20 to 30% max gain on risk is what we're usually looking for. So on a one point spread, we're going to say, okay, about 80 bucks is about, um, as much of risk per contract as we want on a one point strike. That means we're taking a 20 bucks. To do it 10 times, taking 200, risk 800. On the two and a half point strikes we showed you, we were taking in like 50 bucks. So that would mean like, okay, if you're net risking 200, you might do five contracts times 50 bucks. That's 250 bucks collected for a thousand points of risk. So that 25% return on our margin is very typical. And you do have to have a margin account in your options account to do these credit spread trades. That scares some people. It really shouldn't because we're not doing anything naked here. Like we said, we're always covering our max risk. So it really makes your job a lot easier as a trader and, not, and takes your stress level down dramatically. Here's Biogen. We mentioned, you know, we, we, Biogen's like, you know, behind Amgen, Biogen's probably the most stable biotech there is. We don't do a lot of biotech, so those would be probably the only couple that we would really look at these days. Uh, wouldn't mess with the vaccine stocks, for example, where one gap, one good trial day or not would probably mess up your one gap against you would really mess up you're trading profits for a while. So you don't want to have to be in that gap worry scenario. But this is Biogen. Stock was trading about 340. We sold a 335 put. Notice it tested down a few days later to or just under that 335 level intraday before reversing and finishing back up here at 340 at the end of the day. So once that happened, we're saying, okay, then the next day up back up at 340, we're saying, hey, the stock's about flat from where we got in. We're making 27% in four trading days. We'll take it. That's 69 bucks a contract. Uh, we were risking in this case about a uh, buck eighty-one, so uh, one hundred eighty-one bucks on a sixty-nine buck collected. Uh, so that's the idea. Is okay. It can look like it's not really doing much, but it, it stops going down, and that's really what you're profiting from is that it's not going into that vertical mode against you. Here's the case of Schlumberger, the big oil services giant, back when it was at a lot higher price levels, where he said, "You know what? Okay, it's had a big bounce." By the way, you'll see technical analysis come into play here, like big bounce, a lot of support, comes back in this area, and then it's kind of back into that zone where you may now see some selling pressure because the people who missed it on that last breakdown now are happy to get back out at about the breakdown levels here, about 65 or 65 and change. And we sold 66 calls, bought 67, 22 bucks a contract, net risk of 78 bucks a contract. So we're making a little bit over 25% max profit and we took the 20 and a half percent when it popped down four trading days later. So you see this pattern happening again and again where we were right in the bigger picture, but even if you're not directly right, as long as you're not badly wrong, 
you can get paid nicely and steadily with credit spread trades. So the idea being that, okay, 20 and a half percent, four trading days, we'll take it. And you look back and you go, oh, you could have made so much more buying a put in this example because the stock really got creamed over the next week or two. But the idea is that we're in this game for that consistent income generation. And when we get it and it hits our objectives, we take it. Wells Fargo, another one where it had bounced and it was starting to see some signs of reversal last fall. We're saying, okay, this is losing that momentum. You can see clearly, even though it's kind of had a wild looking candle on that bar, it's a little bit lower from where it opened. So stock's about 53 and three quarters. We're selling 55 and a half calls, buying the 54 and a half calls, selling the those and then buying the 55 and a half calls. So one point max risk, net risk of 80 bucks for the 20 bucks we collect. Collect 200 bucks, risk 800. So when, when we're max profiting at 25%, 20% or more, in this case, 21 and a quarter percent in just two days works really well. Even though, yes, in retrospect, we could have made more. We've made enough in most of our profit that getting that money back in our pocket has oftentimes really paid good dividends to keep us uh, focused on the bigger um, the bigger opportunities and not getting stuck grinding out that last few percentage points and, and worrying about it. So you can see we would only take that bearish example here. We got close there. This one also was one there. It started to reverse, but it was a, it was a little bit too, um, too, too far below our key level at that point when it starts to reverse. So even though it ends up coming back down, we're saying we just don't want to mess with that one. Don't feel confident enough about it. So again, like I told you, why I love it is that you can write yourself these checks and and when we were first doing our testing on this years ago um, about, you know, okay, what's the, what's the best system that we can find? In this case, we're looking at SPY, the S&P 500. And this is a trade station chart that shows, okay, like a model portfolio performance over 20 years of data from 1998 to 2018. Okay. And so what I love about this is not just that it's making new equity highs in green very often here, but when it's wrong, it doesn't show you the big spikes down. You have sure the occasional little givebacks here. You can see they're they're fairly contained and muted. Even a flat period here, I'm going. This is a perfect system, not just for thinking directionally, but for thinking non-directionally about going out of the money. This is just buying spy. So if we go out of the money and sell a put credit spread, we're going to further enhance our win percentage. On spy itself, we were already up to about a 65% win rate. And then once we add in the out of the money option strategy to it, it gives us a nice little jump up into the 80% plus win rate potential uh, for the out of the money credit spreads uh, with this technique. What's also I think pretty impressive on this system is that you'd think, oh gee, yeah, it's been a mostly bullish period, right? Besides some financial crises or the bubble in 2000 popping for tech, mostly it's been bullish, right? But look at the short trades, they're still, a fairly close uh, win percentage with an overall nice overall uh, $3,967 gain compared to the longs, as you expect, higher at uh, $4,904. Past performance doesn't guarantee future results. I can tell you I feel a lot better when I see something like that, which tells me that it's almost kind of regardless of market conditions that it can benefit from both the buy the dip and the sell the bounce uh, setups with the proper filtering. JP Morgan, you can see, here's one where you can see we drew in our, our 111 strike on the upper and then our 110 below it in the lower blue uh, horizontal line here. And you say, okay, from this perspective, you know, you can see when we get into that trade, we're kind of tested intraday and then also again the next morning. And you're saying this is one that really makes a lot of sense you know everybody gets down on the banks then they start to show some support then we start to really go uh trending in in the right direction so let's talk about a losing trade here how about nike okay so we said okay you've seen the number of winners eight out of ten winners what about when you have the two out of ten that aren't working when we saw nike here here's like what it looks like a classic buy the dip setup it's oversold we're above the long-term average we're back into a prior low here Everything looks good to go here, and we're getting into this thing at about 82 and a half, selling the 81 and a half put about a point below. As I said, when it goes below 81 and a half plus a premium we collected in here, or in this case, minus that premium we collected, about 81.30 is our break even and expiration. It's getting knocked down about 80 and a half into that next day's close. That is too steep, folks. 
It was 82 and a half. It's down almost two points that next day. We're, we're betting it's not going to be down more than a point by the expiration. Uh, and you can see we stopped it out and lost 51 and a quarter percent. So what is typical of a credit threat strategy is that you will typically see your losses, which are not happening nearly as often. When they do hit, they'll be about double what your typical winners are. That can vary. But the principle here is, okay, if it's about twice the credit you collected, that's another rule of thumb to say, get out. My contention would be if it breaks that badly and it should have been bouncing and it's not bouncing, it's going exactly the wrong way, that's probably telling us something about that this signal is definitely a, a bad signal and one in which something else is happening in the market. And so we don't ever want to try to throw good money after bad because it'll just end up getting uh, traders in trouble. So we want to just say, okay, stay focused on what you need to do and the right structure will definitely help to know that you're on, on the right path there. Target, put credit spread. Uh, you can see here, this is one that's been phenomenal winner. And from that perspective, you can see that it really does look like a nice entry here. We're starting to show some signs of support in here. And so what, what do we do? We basically are, are betting that we're going to keep on grinding higher. And you can see we do end up um, grinding higher off that first entry there. And this is our some momentum. We end up saying, okay, that's good enough for us. Let's go ahead and um, hop out there and say whatever happens from there happens. We're not going to mess with it. Um, so that's the thing, you know, it's like, okay, it was slightly in our favor after being kind of choppy and saying that's good enough for us. Now, um, like I mentioned early on, you know, uh, we want to try to win on 80% or more of our trades. Past performance does not guarantee future results, but from the time that the pandemic was really picking up steam to uh, 90 days later as of June 9th, uh, you can see here 85.71% win rate. There's no guarantees on win rate. There's no guarantees on performance. I can just tell you I have a lot of confidence when I'm trading the strategy because I know I've put the odds on my side and my subscriber side. And you can see our average profits in that 21.43% gain. And th these are based on the concept a lot of them I showed you where if we're making about 25% max profit, if we get 20% or better, that's usually good enough for us to say, okay, we're, we're into a zone where we're very comfortable locking that down taking the money and moving on to the next opportunity. There's going to be time, other times where, you know, the, the goal of uh, making sure that we're playing for that kind of consistency is really what we're after and making sure that we can profit from it. Now, usually like the best special I just did for my big trends community um, to lock in longer term access was a uh, half off of a 12 month access for just 497 bucks or two years for 747. I'm going to do it one better. Uh, David and I have known each other a long time. And as I said before, he works with me here at Big Trends for quite a while before going on to his latest success uh, with Anka. Uh, bottom line is that when you go to the special link I've set up for you here, and I'm going to pop it in your chat box or ask the David to pop it in, I should say, uh, and, and the team there. Uh, Members.bigtrends.com slash spreads. You can try it for 30 days and we'll take it from the usual 97 bucks a month down to just 27 bucks a month. Uh, and it's got our 800 big trends number in there too. I'll come back to that slide in a minute, but let me show you what you'll see when you go to that members.bigtrends.com slash spreads. It just pops you right into the order link. No, no like um, copy or trying to, trying to get you to, to pull the trigger. It's like, Hey, this, you should, you should be taking advantage of this for 27 bucks for the next 30 days. Try it for 30 days. If you don't like it, you can cancel in your first 30 days. You won't be billed again, but it's set up that it would auto bill uh, after 30 days at 97 bucks for the next month. And for each month or after, um, if you like it, I think you're going to, uh, for what you can do for about a trade a week where I'm saying, you know, typically on about up to a thousand dollars risk, we're generating, a couple hundred, 200, 250 bucks per thousand risk. So if we get four of those in, in, a, in a month. And, you know, even if we go, you know, three out of four and control our risk on the other, I would still uh, hope to make uh, many multiples of your even normal monthly rate investment. Uh, not to mention if we go, you know, and, and go four for four, we can potentially knock out almost a thousand bucks of gains for a typical uh, starting subscriber. Um, so again, can't guarantee that, but the idea is that I think you can see a tremendous ROI on your investment. Plus, 
I'm, I'm going to give you the access to the settings, the rule sheets, all the stuff to kind of get you basically bought in on the front end. Essentially, I'm willing to take the short term loss if it costs me a lot more than 27 bucks to run the service with the team I've got here and all the infrastructure and whatever. I'll, I'll take that risk to say I, I'm very confident that you're going to be a happy subscriber and want to continue with the service past your first 30 day access for just 27 bucks. So, um, so go to that page. When you go to it, by the way, one thing I want to show you here is that, that we've already applied the coupon here so instead of 97 you're only paying 27 try it for the next 30 days um, let us know if, if it's not for you and, and the terms and conditions are spelled out and you'll see them here as well when you go to the green checkout button get all your information in, in bold here and we we'll take all your major cards of course and uh, and whatnot you know you can say you saw with me or on, on a webinar or whatever and so this is one thing I want to point out to you. We can text you the alerts if you put them in here on the, on the customer note field. Just type in text the alerts to me at my number, whatever your cell number is. And so you type that in. And we do ask that you put in your provider there. So, so you say, okay, whatever your number is, and then say, okay, if it's AT&T, if it's Verizon, if it's, uh, if it's Sprint, if it's, you know, whatever, T-Mobile. Just put in whatever it is and then, and then uh, review the terms and conditions. They're all spelled out in full here. Once you've done that, click on the checkbox so you reviewed it. We even break it out further about this is an auto-renewed program, so you know, no surprises. You, you, I believe you're going to be very happy with it and want to continue after your first 30 days at 27. At, at the day 31, it'll rebuild at 97 bucks for the next month and, and for each month thereafter until you tell us to stop and we show you the full cancel policy if you ever need to cancel. I think you're going to be so happy with the value you get from us that – even 97 bucks a month is going to look like a steal for the quality of trades and everything you get. So that's much better than this, uh, this 497 and 747 as a place to start. So go there to members.bigtrends.com slash spreads. If you have any questions, just remember 1-800-BIG-TRENDS. That's our toll-free number there in the bottom left, 800-244-8736. Just remember 800-BIG-TRENDS. We're here to help. I want to hand it back over to uh, David and the team there. Um, uh, and say so thank you all for having me. It's always a pleasure, and I wish I could stay on uh, beyond. Uh, but uh, if anybody has any questions, they can certainly reach out to us at 800 Big Trends with any questions about today's presentation. Thanks so much for having me. Thank yeah, you so much, Bryce. Thanks, Price. Thank yeah, you. As, uh, as Price mentioned, he was my uh, original mentor in this industry. So, uh, so if you if you are enjoying uh, what I'm doing with Tiny Research these days, I. You know, I may not have ever get, gotten into this industry if Price hadn't given me a chance to work with him. So uh, send him a thank you note if you're enjoying timing research and be sure to check out his uh, his products. Thank you, David. Thank you, Uncle. You all take Good care. Price. Thanks, Enjoy Price. Enjoy your presentation. Bye. Enjoyed it. <laughs>